Hey everybody, today I'm going to be taking a look back at a classic film, The Manchurian Candidate, which came out in 1962. It is directed by John Frankenheimer. It stars Lawrence Harvey, Frank Sinatra, Angela Lansbury, Janet Leigh, and many others. The reason I'm reviewing this particular film is because um, I've had a lot of politics on my mind. The state of the world is, is scaring me a little bit, and uh, I think it's scaring quite a lot of people. So I, I just thought why not look at a film that is kind of revered for being a very famous, very true to life in many ways political satire. I hadn't seen this film in, in quite a while uh, when I watched it recently um, and one of the big questions I had going into it was does the does the state of uh, American politics at the time, uh, world politics as well, does it really hold up till today's standards? And uh, Yes, it does. Frightfully so. This is a very clever political thriller that does examine the very Machiavellian nature of politics. When this film came out, a lot of controversy surrounded it um, because it rang very true for most Americans, especially after the era of McCarthyism. The film starts off taking place in the early 50s during the Korean War, where a bunch of soldiers are captured and they become prisoners of war. One of these soldiers includes uh, Lawrence Harvey's character, Raymond Shaw, who is kind of the main target for this, this scheme, and he also happens to be the stepson of someone who is a potential presidential candidate for the Republican side. And there's another soldier named Bennett Marco who is played by uh, Frank Sinatra, and he, in a way, is kind of the moral center. He stands for the everyman. These prisoners are basically brainwashed by uh, Chinese communists and they are sent back to America to carry out their, um, their plans for total political control. And Raymond, in particular, is not the same when he returns. He's under this very strange hypnosis so that if he hears a trigger word, he can basically carry out any orders that are given to him. And this includes very serious ones that include assassination assassination attempts. Frank Sinatra, as I said, is one of the stars of the film, and he was very, he believed in this project a lot, I think. He was very hands-on in terms of uh, the production of it. I just think politics was a, a really big deal for him at the time, because he was also a big factor in JFK's rise to political power in terms of getting that commercial appeal, uh, because he certainly like endorsed him when he was running. But one of the other reasons why this film was so uh, controversial was because it does show a lot of the, the violence and the anger that uh, is involved when it comes to all of this uh, fight for political control. And of course, not too soon after the film came out, JFK was assassinated. And the irony of that happening so closely after this film came out caused Sinatra to be very upset. Apparently he removed the film from distribution uh, very soon after, and it wasn't until I think 1988 that uh, the film was commercially released for wide distribution. And this film is still very, very scary to watch, precisely for the reasons that I mentioned earlier, because we still see so much of that uh, manipulation, that greed, and the move towards cap capitalism and probably now more than any other election I've ever seen. It's not only a political thriller, it's also a very dark satire, and the entire film is very off-kilter, and it very, has a lot of surrealistic elements to it, uh, not only in terms of the imagery, but in just the way the story is built. It's, it's strange, and it feels very disorienting. I really love the look of it. it, it kind of transitions between different styles. It sometimes has this kind of very zippy, like a quick but a grainy handheld camera look to it, which is meant to be more in the scenes where media is driving a lot of what's going on. So it's got sort of a televised feel. And then at other times, it's very sharply contrasted by a very cinematic look. It's got a lot of like Dutch angles, very heavy shadows, and it's very distorted and very dark. And I really love the score as well. I think it really adds a lot to the film um, because the main theme when you're listening to it at the beginning starts off as this very kind of grand Americana, Aaron Copeland style piece of music, very sweeping. But the more it goes on, it starts to twist and become much more dissonant and weird, and it almost has like a Stravinsky feel to it. It's like you have this idea, this melody that is supposed to be what America is, and as it goes on, it slowly twists into something that is much more deviant and distressing. But what's most important to me is the, is the core story, and the core story in this film is basically the tragedy of Raymond Shaw. Uh, he's a man who has never once, he's never been in control of his life. Uh, his mother, played by Angela Lansbury, is 
you could consider her the villain of the film and she's one of the best villains I think I've seen in in a Hollywood movie. She's just she's evil. She's just this this angry this manipulative person who uses her husband and her son as as puppets for her own benefit. And then her husband is just like this airhead of a senator and he rises so quickly in fame in terms of his political prowess certainly because she's controlling every move that he makes and basically he says anything that she tells him to say. Then because Raymond is under this strange uh, hypnosis from these communists, she also uses Raymond to carry out a lot of these murders of people that stand in her way of achieving this political domination. She reminds me of, of Cersei from, from Game of Thrones. She has a lot of those crafty, very selfish traits in her. And I think that because she's a woman, even though that is never outright stated, um, the fact that she's a woman, she just doesn't have the same abilities, the same authority that a male carried at that time. In a lot of ways, she doesn't really love her husband or her son. She wants to be them. And that kind of comes off in very interesting ways. It's almost like she gets off on that power. It's like a, a sexual sort of prowess for her. This film is based on a book and I know they go into more uh, detail in terms of the sexuality in the book, but in the film there is a short scene between her and her son Raymond that has a lot of very Freudian implications in it, and it's it's a very Oedipus Rex type scene. It's interesting. Even though Raymond Shaw isn't considered a likable character in the beginning of the film, it's this disorientation and this feeling of claustrophobia, of paranoia that he's feeling where we come to kind of sympathize with him. And this mind control that he's experiencing is really um, basically driving him insane. And in a way, I see, even though Raymond isn't really considered the everyman, I think you would say that would be more the Frank Sinatra character, um, I think we can even empathize with him a lot because that's kind of what the media does in politics to its target audience, which is the American people. Uh, they kind of, you know, twist you to believe whatever they want to. It's a manipulative thing to the point where it can drive you to um, anger and madness. At a certain point when you're kind of being tossed between right and left wing ideals, uh, emotions get very heightened and, and um, logistics just go out the window. I mean, clearly right now there's nothing logical about what's going on. That's why I think this film is very special, um, you know, not only because it's very clever in terms of the way they implement kind of the wit and uh, the entertainment and how it's very gripping as it goes on. It's very well built as a story. It's amazing how it shows how disturbing the realities of politics are. What we see in the film may seem like, you know, oh, it's just for dramatic purposes. It's, it's meant to be exaggerated. It's really not that far from the truth and that's why it's so disturbing. So if you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. It's perfect for uh, what's happening right now, especially. And that's my review. Thank you all for listening. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, the link is below for that. And you can also like my Facebook page in the link below that. Catch you next time.